Hi everyone, Alice Zhao here from Maven Analytics. In this video, I'll be walking through my approach for tackling the Maven Halloween challenge, which is to use data to find three types of Halloween candy that will make you the most popular house on the block. I'm gonna share my thought process as a data scientist and explain how I incorporate machine learning, Python, and Tableau into my analysis to come up with my final three candy recommendations. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I've opened up is a Jupyter Notebook. As a data scientist, I really like to do my analysis within Python and Jupyter Notebooks are a really user-friendly place to write Python code. Now I've pasted in the challenge details up here. Again, our goal is to identify three types of Halloween candy that we can pass out. And here are some more details. We know that there are 85 types of candy in our data set. We want to cater to trick-or-treaters of all tastes. And specifically, we wanna use data to back up our decision. So this is gonna be my high level approach. First, I'm gonna view all my data in Python, and then I'm going to do some tasks I often do as a data scientist. So one is using a machine learning algorithm called PCA that will help us create a scatter plot. And then also I'm gonna add something called jitter to that scatter plot to make the points in the plot easier to interpret. Now, after I do those two things, I'll have created a nice scatter plot that I can use to extract insights. And then from there, I'm actually gonna take my scatter plot and pull it into Tableau because Tableau is a really nice tool we can use to interactively explore our data. Let's get started by just viewing the data. So to do this within Python, the first thing I have to do is import pandas so that I can read in the data set. So I'm gonna do a pd.readcsv of our candy data. And you can see this is the candy data. We have 85 rows. Here are all the candy names. We can see this is a bunch of information about the candies. So whether they're a chocolate candy, a fruity candy, and so on, the candy sugar percent, price percent is how expensive it is, and then win percent is how often people like that candy. So looking at this, I can see a few categories of attributes. For every candy, we have information about the flavor of the candy, its nutrition, its price, and then how popular it is. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just take a subset of this data set and just look at the flavor of the candy. So this is the data set that I just read in. I'm gonna save that as a data variable. And then I've done a dot head here to only return the top five rows so I can see that as reference. And next, I'm going to just select the columns of interest. So I'm gonna do a data.iloc, which lets me select which rows and columns I wanna work with. So at this point, I want to return all the rows so I can specify that with a colon. And then I wanna return the first column all the way to everything except the last three columns. So just a reminder here that counting in Python starts at zero. So the zero with column is competitor name and then the first column is chocolate. And if I run that, now you see I just have these nine columns in the middle here and I'm going to save that as subset and do a dot head one more time, just view the top view. And this is the subset of my data that I'm going to work with going forward. Now the next step here is to apply principal component analysis. Because now that I have this data in nine columns, I want to compare all the data points. And I'm gonna be able to do that better using a machine learning algorithm called PCA. So let me just give you a brief overview of what that is before we get into the code. PCA is one of my favorite machine learning algorithms and I've used it a lot in practice. The basic idea is you start with many columns of data and then you reduce them down into fewer columns. And those fewer columns are gonna be able to capture what's going on in your entire data set. And if you reduce your data into just two or three columns, that allows you to put all your data points onto a 2D or 3D plot. So simply put, PCA allows you to take many columns of data and put them onto a single scatter plot with an x-axis and a y-axis. And then from there, you can visually see patterns and relationships between your data points. Now, this is just a quick intro into how PCA works. I talk a lot more about the math behind this and how to interpret the results in my unsupervised learning course within the data science and Python path at Maven Analytics. Okay, now back to our code. Now to apply PCA to our data set, the first thing we're gonna have to do is import PCA and we're doing that from scikit-learn's decomposition module. So scikit-learn is a library within Python that allows us to apply a lot of machine learning algorithms. So from here, we are going to apply the PCA algorithm. Now to do that, I'm going to define a PCA object and I'm gonna say, I want my outcome to have two components. So that means I want to turn my nine columns of data into just these two columns. Let me add an S there. And then if I run that, this is saying, all right, let's get started with our PCA model. So I'm gonna take that PCA model, I'm gonna do a dot fit on subset. So we can apply this idea of turning nine columns into two columns on our subset of data up here. 
So if I run that, you can see all the math behind the scenes has been done. This has allowed us to take these nine columns and turn them into just two. So now that the model has been fit, we can explore it a little bit more. So I'm gonna do a PCA.explain variance ratio. And I just did a tab there to autocomplete. And you can see here that I get two numbers here. If I add these two numbers together, it's around 60. And that's telling me that those two new columns I created out of the nine columns capture about 60% of the information in my original nine columns. It's saying that these two columns are a decent representation of those nine columns. Now from here, let's take a look at those two columns of data. So to do that, I'm gonna do a PCA.transform of my subset of my data. And this doesn't look really nice, so I'm gonna change this into a data frame, which is the nicer looking data structure within pandas. And you can see here, we have our two columns of data. And this was created from the original nine columns. Now with these two columns of data, we can turn this into a scatter plot, which is where things get interesting. So I'm gonna save this as my candy in two dimensions. And then I'm just gonna do a dot head here so we can still see this for reference. And now from here, I'm gonna take my candy 2D data and I'm going to plot it. So specifically, I want to see a scatter plot. And then for my X axis, I'm gonna take this zeroth column here. And then for my Y axis, I'm gonna take this first column here. And if I run that, you can see here, this is my scatter plot of all the candies. Now, one thing I noticed right away is there aren't too many dots. You can see there are probably 10, 20, about 30 dots here, but we know that there are 85 candies. And the reason for this is because some dots might be sitting on top of one another. So let's take a look at our data again. So you can see here, this one dime candy and this one quarter candy, they both look exactly the same in terms of the data. And so up here, they are gonna be overlapping each other. Now to solve that, we can use something called jitter. So the idea of jitter is, let's say we have five points that are all sitting at this location. We can add a little bit of noise here so that they all spread out a little bit. So to do that, we are going to import another Python library called NumPy, and I'm specifically going to use the random module. So within the random module, what I can do is if I called rand normal, then it's going to give me a random number from the normal distribution. So every time I run this, you can see it gives me a different result. So right now this is just giving me one output, but I know that there are 85 candies here that I wanna add a little noise to. So I'm gonna put an 85 in here and that's gonna give me 85 random values. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go back to our candy data set up here and I'm gonna take this first column of data, add some random noise to it, take the second column of data and add some random noise to it. So if we go back down here, I'm gonna do a candy 2D and then take that first column, add some noise to it, and then paste that down here and do the same to the second column. And then I'm gonna save these both to our original data set as X jitter, and then this one's gonna be called Y jitter. And now I can plot this information. So I'm gonna do a data.plot. Again, we're looking for a scatter plot. And for my X, I'm gonna call that X jitter. And then for my Y, that's going to be my Y jitter. And then if I plot that, you can see this is my plot. Now, if I'm comparing this plot with my original plot up here, I would say this plot was a lot better because we were able to see these kind of distinct clusters. But now down here, I feel like I've added too much noise and it's all basically one blob now. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit less noise. I'm gonna take this random value and multiply it by 0.1 to reduce it to just 10% of the original noise. Now if I run that one more time, you can see that the jitter now is much more subtle and I'm able to see these clusters of data here. So at this point, we have done all the Python steps up here. We viewed the data within Python, we applied PCA to bring our data set from nine dimensions or nine columns into two columns, we added some jitter or some noise to our data set to be able to see them more clearly on the plot. And now from here, I'm gonna move this into Tableau. And the reason for this is because this plot in Python is really difficult to explore interactively within a Jupyter Notebook. We can import some additional libraries and do some additional coding, but I really like to do this exploration step within Tableau. So what I'm gonna do next is export this data set so that I can read it into Tableau. So if we take a look at data one more time, you can see this is our original data set. 
but now I've added two columns, one called X jitter and one called Y jitter. And now we can use those two columns to create our scatter plot within Tableau. So to export this, I'm gonna do a data.2 CSV. I'm gonna call this candy data PCA. And if I run that, then this data is saved as candy data PCA, and we can move on over to Tableau. Now I've opened up Tableau, and the first thing I'm gonna do is connect to a text file. And specifically, I'm gonna choose this PCA file that we just exported. And if I take a look at the file here, it's looking good. I see my X jitter and my Y jitter fields here. And I'm gonna go to sheet one, and I'm gonna name this sheet candy analysis. So from here, the first thing I'm gonna do is just plot my X jitter and my Y jitter. So I've highlighted those two. If I go over here to the show me, I'm gonna plot this on a scatter plot. And at the moment, I see everything is just in one point down here. I'm just gonna change these measures to dimensions. So I can end up seeing all the points instead of the sum of the points. And here is my scatter plot that we saw in Python as well. And I always like to change the shapes so that they're filled in. This is a little bit easier for me to see. And then here I see this is X jitter and Y jitter. So just to be consistent with what we saw earlier, I'm gonna switch the X and the Y axis. And I can do that using the swap rows and columns button up here. Now this plot matches what we saw before in Python. So let's do some further exploration. The first thing I'm gonna do is just bring on all the competitor names onto the label. And now you can see here, these are all the candies. Now these are 85 candies. This is really hard for us to interpret. So let's filter this down somehow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter these by win percent. I'm gonna click this to show the filter here. And you can see the win percent goes all the way up to 84, but some of the candies have really low win percents. So I'm gonna filter those out. So I'm just gonna move this up to about the halfway mark. And we can see some candies start getting filtered out. This is kind of interesting because once I filter it to about this halfway part, you can see that there are these groups here of different types of candies. Now out of each group, I'm curious which candy is the most popular. So what I'm gonna do is take win percent and put it over color. And now I see over here that the darker the color is, the more people like that candy. So over here, for example, we have Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, and Starburst. Starburst has this win percent of 67 versus a 63 and a 59. So Starburst is the most popular candy within this little group here. So let's just pause here for a moment and just remember our original goal in the first place. We wanted to pick three candies that would make a lot of people happy. So from this visualization, we can see that there are these different groups of candies. So what I'm gonna do at this point is cluster this so that there are these distinct groups of candies and then I can pick the most popular candy within each cluster because then I can have a variety of candies. And to do this, we can go into the analytics tab here in Tableau. So this allows us to do some more advanced analysis and one of them is a cluster analysis. So if I double click on this, you can see at this point, it's clustering our variables based on win percent, but that's not what we want. So I'm gonna drag that out of there. Instead, I want it to cluster the data based on the X jitter and the Y jitter. So I'm gonna take these two here and pull them into the clusters. And specifically, I want four clusters. And you can see now that there are four clusters of candy within my visualization. So if we take a look at some of the names here, if I see Skittles, Starburst, and Sour Patch Kids, these would be my fruity candies. Up here, we have Rolos, Junior Mints, M&Ms. These are candies that have a lot of pieces within each pack. Here, we have all our Reese's candies, and Butterfinger is kind of similar to that. And then down here, we have all of our chocolatey candies. So one cool thing about PCA is that when you reduce your data into just two columns, it's gonna put them all on some X axis and some Y axis, and it's your job to name those axes. So in this case, I would say on the X axis, this is chocolate up here, and then this is fruity down here. And then on our Y axis, these are our candies that have multiple candies per pack. And then down here, this is just a single candy bar per pack. So these clusters are looking pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna lock them in. What I'm gonna do is highlight all this data and then I'm gonna choose keep only to just keep all this data for this next step. Okay, I need to choose the most popular candy within each cluster. So the way I'm gonna do this is by moving this filter. So I'm gonna move it up so that the less popular candies get filtered out. So at this point, you can see over here, the only fruity candy that was left was Starburst. So that is one candy that I'm gonna keep is Starburst. And then I'm gonna keep moving this up and now you can see oh, up here, 
only Reese's Pieces is left. So Starburst and Reese's Pieces. And then if I keep going, then you can see just Twix is left down here. And then finally, only Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are left. Okay, knowing that, I'm gonna unfilter all that. And what I'm gonna do is add this competitor name as a filter. And then I'm only gonna choose those candies. So it was Twix, Starburst, Reese's Pieces, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So those are the ones that I would pick if I were to pick one from each cluster, but our original goal was to pick three different types of candy. And in that case, using my domain expertise in candy, these two candies are actually quite similar, so I would just pick one of them, and then you can see this has a win percent of 73, while this has one of 84. So I'm gonna uncheck the pieces one, and these here, Starburst, Peanut Butter Cups, and Twix are the three candies I'm gonna hand out to my trick-or-treaters on Halloween. And I was able to do all that from a data science lens using machine learning, Python, and Tableau. And that's my data science approach for the Maven Halloween challenge. And I plan on buying all three candies to hand out for trick-or-treaters this Halloween. I can't wait to see what you come up with for your challenge submissions as well. If you'd like to dive deeper, check out our self-paced data science in Python and Tableau courses, guided projects and portfolio showcase at Maven Analytics, and create your personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. See you in the next one.